stress fracture friends. I'm sorry you're here. I've been in your shoes, or maybe I should say I have been in your walking boot. I know you want to get out of that thing as soon as possible. So let's talk about the two supplements that you probably need to be taking right now. And hint, I'm not even going to talk about calcium. Plus, make sure you stay around to the end where I'm going to talk about what's most important for you and your nutrition right now. We will talk about those two supplements plus what, when, and how so that you know exactly what you need to do when you walk away or hobble away from this episode. Number one, you can probably guess this one. It's vitamin D. And even though you probably already knew that vitamin D is important, there are some tricky key things that I want you to know. So if we're thinking of your bone right now like a construction site, and to be fair, whether you're going through a fracture or not, your bones are always breaking down and rebuilding. But of course, right now with a fracture, we want to focus on that rebuilding. So there's a construction site in your bone and our calcium might be the bricks to that house. Calcium is really important for the the structure, the matrix of your bone. But vitamin D is what helps absorb that calcium into your body. So again, if we're looking at a construction site and calcium might be the bricks to our bone, vitamin D is the trucks that are going to, you know, carry it there and and dump it to be ready to build. Of course, you can get vitamin D from food, things like fish and and mushrooms. uh, But We don't see a lot of evidence where getting it through food really helps move your vitamin D status. You can, of course, get it through the sun as well, but most of us are much better at wearing sunscreen these days, so that's going to block your absorption of vitamin D from the sun. And there's some evidence that even if you are in one of those sunnier places closer to the equator, we're still not necessarily seeing improved vitamin D status in a sunnier place. So even if you're like, oh, it's summer, I'm out in the sun all the time, you you potentially still need to supplement with vitamin D. And of course, if you're in Wisconsin in January playing an indoor sport or something like that, you you <laughs> most likely need to supplement. When you go to pick out a supplement from the store, you'll see D2 or D3. Your body can convert D2 to D3 anyways, but most likely you'll find it in a D3 form. That's what we're looking for. But here's the most important thing when it comes to talking about vitamin D supplementation. Vitamin D is a fat-soluble vitamin. So there's a little bit more risk here. And what I mean by that is most of your other vitamins are water-soluble. So if you're getting extra you're just going to pee out the rest and there's not a lot of risk there you know there is always some risk and there are chances of toxicity with water soluble vitamins as well but when we're getting too much vitamin D we store that in our body and you run the risk of toxicity so i really 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 like to see blood work to recommend a specific dose of vitamin D that you want to take You should, especially if you have consistent stress fractures, ask your doctor for vitamin D blood work on your on your next visit. But it's pretty safe for most people to take 1000 to 2000 IU of vitamin D during this process while you are healing the stress fracture. If you are deficient, your doctor might recommend 5000 or even 10,000 IU, but I really don't recommend jumping to those on your own uh, without seeking professional advice. Not even just advice, without seeking data, right? Go see what's going on in your body. Get the blood work done. The next thing I'm going to recommend is magnesium. And again, you might already know this, but there's a lot of nuance in knowing how to supplement for magnesium. There's a lot of, of different types. And if you get the wrong one, uh, things can go wrong. Namely, we're going to talk about diarrhea and things like that. But magnesium actually is one of those building blocks in your bone that's important for that matrix. So we want to make sure you're getting enough. And again, there's a lot of sources that say the majority of Americans are not eating the daily recommendation of magnesium. I'm going to put a list of foods right here. And I want you to think about how many you eat on a normal basis. It doesn't have to be every day, but at least a couple times a week. And you can always start there. You can look at that list of foods. And if you see some that you really like, that would be easy to incorporate more often, then maybe you don't need to supplement. Maybe we're going to work on getting it through food. But if you want to give yourself a little bit of a safety net, make sure that you're getting what you need every day, even while incorporating those foods, 
then let's talk about supplementation. When you go look for a magnesium supplement, you are going to see a lot of different kinds. You'll probably see a magnesium citrate. This is usually the cheapest option, but here's the caveat. While this is a great form because it's easy for your body to absorb and digest, it is also a natural laxative. Let's say that you're struggling with a constipation. This might be a great option for you. This might be the option that you want to choose. If you don't typically struggle with that, then getting too much magnesium citrate, citrate in your system will maybe lead to looser stool or some, some diarrhea. Um, for most people, we see this around like 400 milligrams, but just be aware if this is the, the type of magnesium that you go with and things start to change when you're going to the restroom, uh, this might be the culprit. Instead, I would recommend looking for a magnesium malate. This, again, is also pretty easy to find. It's easily digestible and absorbable within your body. We see it move magnesium levels the way that we want to. For bones specifically, this is the type of magnesium I'm looking for. If we're talking about brain health or potentially if we're talking about sleep and that kind of stuff, we're, we might talk about other kinds. But for your stress fracture, magnesium malate is my recommendation to you. Again, I'll show you the daily recommendation here. But remember, you are going to get some from food. So 100 to 300 milligrams per day through a supplement is probably the range we're looking for. If you are someone that can eat or someone that regularly eats more foods on this list, then you might lean towards the 100 milligrams per day. If you're someone that really doesn't eat a lot of uh, magnesium food sources, then we want to lean more towards 300 milligrams per day. Also, if you are taking a multivitamin, check and see if there's a magnesium in there. You might already be getting it. You might already be getting your vitamin D from there as well. A lot of multivitamins will have about 100 milligrams of magnesium and probably 1,000 IU of vitamin D. The other thing that is important here, though, is magnesium and calcium fight for absorption. We don't really want to take them together, and we also don't really want to get a ton of one thing that may compromise the other or vice versa. So if we are taking way too much magnesium, that might interfere with our ability to use calcium in our body the way that we want to. Or if we're getting way too much calcium, that might interfere with our magnesium. So pay attention to these ranges and these numbers so you're not overdoing it. Let's say every morning you tend to have a bowl of cereal with milk or a coffee with milk or something like that. That would be a great time to take your vitamin D because that's going to help with the calcium absorption that's in the milk. But we don't want to take our magnesium supplement at that time. Maybe we'll take it at dinner where we're not having a calcium source with dinner or a different point in the day. When it comes to bone health, vitamin D, I want you to get that in. Magnesium, I want you to get that in. Calcium, of course, is important. I wanted to give calcium the space to talk about the nuance that it needs. So that's a separate video that I'm going to link in the show notes. And then phosphorus is also a really important nutrient for your bone health as well. But most Americans are getting the phosphorus that they need. So I tend not to really worry about it unless something funky is going on and we need to dive a little bit deeper. Even more importantly than all of those things, though, is that I need you to eat enough. Your bones are an incredibly caloric dependent, energy sucking tissue. And we need to feed them, especially if we want them to kind of work overtime and heal right now. We need to feed that process. There's a really, really, really close connection between how much you're eating, your hormones, and your bone health. So even if you're not purposefully restricting your intake, just by the fact that you are an athlete and your schedule is crazy busy and maybe practice makes you not hungry and you're burning so much energy because you're active so many hours of the day, you just can't keep up with all of your energy needs and you're not eating enough. Not on purpose. That, that happens a lot. So let's do some math and let's make some guesstimate ranges to see how much bare minimum we want you to eat for your bone health. There's a term in nutrition called energy availability. And this means after you do all of your exercise and, you know, all of the extra energy that you need, do we have enough energy left over for our 
daily human functions for our brain to work, for our heart to beat, for our hormonal system, our immune system, our bones turning over all the time, like I mentioned in the beginning, our digestion, all of that stuff. There's a lot of ways that your body is using energy, even when you're sitting. We want athletes to have a minimum of 30 calories per kilogram of fat-free mass. And there's some maybe confusing words in there. So one, make sure you're working in kilograms so you can take your weight in pounds divided by 2.2. That's how we're going to work in kilograms. And then fat-free mass means all of the tissue in your body minus the adipose tissue minus the fat tissue. So technically to accurately find this, we would need a body fat percentage. My guess is most of you don't really have access to that. But for the sake of this, we can kind of guess and give yourself a range. That'll be pretty close. And then you can use your best judgment. I know I know you're smart. Maybe for this range that we're going to make today, let's use 15 to 25% body fat. The majority of athletes are going to fall within that range. I'll put an example up here. Let's say this is a 150 pound female. Keep in mind, this number is before your activity. So then if you're going to go do a four-hour gymnastics practice on top of this, we need to add those calories onto this. Ideally, we want an energy availability of 45. So if I do this ideal math using this 150-pound athlete, let's say 15 to 25% body fat, so I can give us a range. We put energy availability at an optimal 45, then where do, where do her calorie needs fall? And again, this is before we get into practice. You can see how it's very, very normal for a female athlete to need 3,000 calories per day, for a male athlete to need 4,000 calories per day. This 2,000 calorie food label is kind of bullshit for a lot of athletes. And I want you to start getting comfortable knowing that you need much more than that. The other really important thing when it comes to energy availability is we want that energy available to you at the right time. So again, I know that you're really busy. <laughs> and I know that maybe when you wake up in the morning, you're not hungry. But if we skip breakfast, and then we have, you know, something little for lunch, and then we go to this big four hour practice after school. And then when we get home later at night, we're super starving. So we eat this insanely large dinner. And even if throughout the whole day, you are getting the calorie number that you need, but all but all of those calories are falling later in the evening, and all of our work has happened earlier in the day, we were in kind of what our body thinks is a calorie deficit when we wanted to do the work. And there's evidence that tells us that can impact your bone health. There's also evidence that tells us, again, even if we're eating evenly throughout the day or we're eating at the right time to support the timing of when we need those calories, even if we're eating enough calories, but we're not eating enough carbohydrates, that's kind of also signaling to our body we're, we're in a deficit sometimes and can negatively impact bone health. Most of you need at least 35% of your calories to come from carbohydrates. I actually would rather see it be like 45 to 50%, um, but bare minimum, at least 35 to make sure that you're getting what you need for your bones. In conclusion, what do I want you to do? I want you to eat enough. I want you to balance your calories throughout the whole day. I want you to make sure you're getting carbohydrates in, preferably at every meal. I want you to probably take vitamin D and magnesium. I want you to follow up with your doctor on potentially getting vitamin D blood work. You can also get magnesium blood work as well. Um, they can test it within your red blood cells, but it's more common and, and easier to get vitamin D. And after this, I want you to check out the calcium video to make sure we're checking that box as well. If you liked this, make sure to follow and subscribe to the newsletter so that every week you can get a helpful tip in your inbox and you never miss a thing. If you would like me to take a deeper look at what you specifically are doing, basically do all this fancy math for you and help you come up with a plan for the boxes that we might not be checking, plus help you make that plan feel easy, sign up for a one-on-one. -on -one. Happy fueling and make sure you drop any questions in the comments or share what's been helpful for you. What's a meal or a snack that you have found includes the things that we need that you really love during this time.